the computer. So good evening, everyone. Tonight is Rosh Kudes Ab, uh, which begins uh, sundown today and, uh, and ends on sundown on the 29th or Friday. And um, for those that are new, we just like to, uh, you know, um, give some little bit of background. Why do we need to celebrate Rosh Kodesh? And here it's very clear in Numbers chapter 10, verse 10. And it says there also on your days of rejoicing at your designated times and on Rosh Kodesh, you are to sound the trumpets over the burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings. This will be a reminder for God. I am your I, I, I am Adonai your God. So so Man. here again, you know, the 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 what I told you last time, the importance of remembering. You know, God does not have a memory problem. We have a memory problem. And uh, that's why we need to be constantly reminded. That's why God, like I said, the last uh, Shabbat, I told you that God wants to be involved in every detail of our lives. That's how much intimacy God desires for us. He's not interested on us um, uh, coming to him every week, every month, every year. No, he, he wants daily. In Isaiah 66, verse 23, again, every month on Rosh Kodesh and every week on Shabbat, everyone, everyone living will come to worship in my presence, says Adonai. So again, very, very important. And, and, uh, and as I said last, last Shabbat or last Rosh Kodesh, that uh, in, the, in the heavenly realm in, in God's kingdom there is no concept of space and time why uh, space and time had to be created um, as, uh, to create a physical universe so but as as we, we've been learning that there is no such thing in in the kingdom of God why because God is ever present God uh, exists pre past present and future all at the same time and as I illustrated here, uh, in, in, the, in the world we live in, time is linear, meaning time uh, happens, there's a past, there's a present, and there's a future. But uh, in order for us to, to conceptualize that, you know, uh, in, in God's kingdom, I, I, I put this clock, you know, in the kingdom of heaven, time is spiral, meaning uh, time is... Uh, is uh, it's circular, you know, it, it's, it's almost like things are happening uh, every moment, every uh, second of uh, God is downloading from heaven, he's, he's releasing blessings, and, uh, and it's up to us to be able to tap into to the things that God is downloading, and he's downloading every time and we need to be made aware we need to be aware we need to be uh we need to be attuned and uh, to understand it even further it's like uh um you know the concept of the fruits and the vegetation you know there is uh there is a there is a season for watermelons you know it, it normally comes on summer why because uh there's so much heat and god wants to um to give us uh water and then uh, what's interesting is uh, on winter, uh, you know, what gets harvested on winter and spring is oranges. Oranges has a lot of vitamin C and vitamin D. And what happens during winter? We have less exposure to sunlight. So, so again, you know, it's, it's, if, we, if we can tap into getting to understand the importance of understanding God's time, God's time, because remember in Ecclesiastes, Chapter three, in the spiritual realm, for everything there is a season, a right time for every intention under heaven. So, so here we 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 are reminded that God's in God's kingdom, in God's economy, there is a, a, a con the, the concept of time. You know, the concept of timing, the the right season, the right timing, mm -hmm. um, and uh, we need to. We need to be able to not only understand it, but tap into 
the the energy that God is releasing, the blessing that God is releasing to the world. So this month is, they call it the month, is the fifth month, which starts, like I said, sunset tonight, July 28th, to sunset July 29th. And Av is an abbreviation for the word Ava. In uh, the Jews, what they did is, of course, Ava means father. And it's customary for them to add the name Menachem. So they call this month Menachem Av, which means comforter or consoler. So this month, uh, we are tapping into the comforter. God is our comforter. And um, it's a very powerful month because if you, in, in, in um, when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, it was, it was in God's plan for the children of Israel to enter the promised land. So they were supposed to enter the promised land on Av, on the month of Av. Uh, but as, as we know, it, 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 the month of supernatural blessing, if you want it. So the, 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 the key there is, do you want it? Do you want supernatural blessings? Because what happened is the children of Israel, the majority of them, they rejected it. So when they rejected it, what happened? There was a big disaster. So it's really our choice. The, 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 as we learned, the night of Av was the night the children of Israel cried for no reason. They were crying. They were mourning. They were saying, you know, the land is so evil. The land is so, you know, they, they were, they were, they were uh, speaking evil against God's land, God's property. They're saying, you know, it's not good enough for us. You know, there are giants there. There are so many. They, 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 they cried for no reason. And, 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 and as a result, the night of Ab became for them throughout history, a month or the day where they had a reason to cry. Why? Because can you imagine, is it coincidence? Is it, you know, is it by chance? No, can you imagine that the, the, on the night of Av, the first temple was destroyed. Several hundred, uh, several, uh, several thousand years later, how could it be that the, that the second temple was also destroyed on the night of Av? And the night of Av has become really a source of mourning, a source of crying, a source of, of, uh, of mourning for the, ch the children of Israel. Why? Because God said, you know, you cried for no reason. Now I'm giving you a reason. So it, throughout the Jewish history, you see that the night of Av became for them. The night of Av is when, when the king of Spain uh, uh, exiled all the Jewish people. They said, you can no longer live in, my, in, in, in our land. So they, they, kicked, they kicked out all the Jews in, in Spain. Yes, yes. So, so there's Indeed. so many. So it, 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 Hashem gave them a true reason to cry and to mourn. And uh, what's interesting about uh, this, this month, every month has a tribe. And the tribe for this month is, is Simeon. Simeon. And what's interesting about the name of Simeon, it means gracious hearing, gracious hearing. And the sense associated with this month is the sense of hearing. That's why, you know, God said, let's Shema, let's hear. You know, th this is the month where it is important for us to be attuned spiritually because uh, Simeon was the second son, but he could have been uh, when, when Reuben uh, failed, when Reuben uh, sinned, uh, he uh, took uh, 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 one of Jacob's wives. Oh, yeah. God, uh, uh, Simeon could have, could have taken the place of the firstborn. But because of his, his lack of spiritual discernment, what happened? Simeon took vengeance for his sister Dinah and lost his place. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so it's important at this month, this is the month where God is speaking to us. God is speaking to us and we need to, not only to, 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 to be made aware, we need to be conscious, we need to be attuned, we need to be listening and, we, and, and, and just, just like the children of Israel, let's be like a Caleb and a Joshua. Let's listen and by faith, carry on what God wants us to do, amen? So we need to, to sharpen our spiritual antenna. So the Hebrew letter, 
uh, associated with the month is the letter Tet. What in, what's interesting about the letter Tet, it looks like an, uh, an inverted letter. It looks like a basket. And uh, or it, 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 in, in, the, in the Hebrew language, Tet means not only basket, it means to surround yourself. It means to contain. So the letter could, could mean hidden blessing, hidden blessing. So if, can you imagine a basket? You, you, know, you, you cannot see what's inside. But God is saying there's a hidden blessing. Sometimes the blessing is in the form uh, of, 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 of trials. Maybe it's in a form of, of a testing. But there's a hidden blessing in there. Because, because uh, in, the, in the picture language, they said there's the, 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 Hebrew, the Hebrew letter Tet is a basket that contains a serpent. That contains a serpent. So, so what's, what's the implication of that? It means that we need to we need to there is a serpent a very powerful animal and god is saying we need to to be able to contain that because if you don't contain that it will bite you so it's it's a month of of caution it's a month of uh, applying wisdom you need to uh, there's a there's a there, there, uh, there's a very powerful uh, spiritual energy and we need to be able to con to contain that within ourselves let's not get ahead of god that's what the, the point is as ab it includes a very low point in the jewish calendar remember as we said the night of ab the day that's uh, that's the, the, the spies the day of the destruction of both the first and the second temples but what's interesting it also incorporates a very high point Mm. Very high point. The fifteenth of Av, a day designated for finding one's predestined soulmate, and it's considered one of the happiest days in the Jewish calendar. So uh, uh, let me explain this. So there are two. Uh, of course, the the fifteenth of Av, which is, is considered the the Jewish Valentine is very little known in, in, in the Jewish calendar. Um, not a lot of people uh, realize that uh, there are two powerful, the, 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 the sages in the, in the Mishnah says there are no holiday greater for the Jewish people compared to the 15th of Ab and Yom Kippur. Can you imagine? They, 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 uh, they, they said that the 15th of Ab is equal to Yom Kippur equal to Yom Kippur. And, uh, and we're gonna I'm going to explain to you why. That, that's a very powerful statement because Yom Kippur is the holiest of all the, the, the feasts of the Lord. The Yom Kippur is the holiest day. It's the holiest day. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and, and what the sages are saying, the 15th of Av is equal in holiness to Yom Kippur. Say wow. Say wow. Wow. And if you stick around, I'm going to explain why. I'm going to explain why. So if, are, are, are you ready to hear the explanation? It's, it, well, why? The, the greatness of the 15th of Av, the Jewish Valentine, is as great as Yom Kippur. This is the holiest day. So the 15th of, of Av is when the daughters of Israel, the daughters of Israel or the daughters of Jerusalem, they go out in the vineyards. And listen, I have a picture here. They go out in the vineyards. They dress on borrowed clothing. So, so every Jewish, eligible Jewish girl will come out. They will be wearing white, borrowed clothing. Why is it borrowed? So that everyone will be wearing the same clothes. Amen. Are you still with me? And what would happen is they would dance in circle around the vineyard. And it, the, the event will attract eligible young men. Of course, that is the purpose. They're looking for a, uh, a bridegroom and the, bri and, uh, and the bridegroom is looking for a bride. So they come out and they watch these uh, beautiful girls wearing white clothing, same clothing, borrowed clothing, dancing in circle. So, Again, what is the connection to Yom Kippur then? So why is, it, why is it connected or equal even to Yom Kippur? One can say 
Yom Kippur is sacred, isn't it? Isn't Yom Kippur sacred? Yes. And marriage is sacred. That's why it's called the holy matrimony. So therefore, in order for the prospective bride and groom to understand that, when they encounter, when they come together, they need to be in a very high, they, they, need, to, they need to understand that, that it is in, 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 a, in a very high spiritual holiness. That you know they're in that atmosphere. It's not. Uh, it's not. Uh, you know, it's it's a very elevated state. That's what I'm trying to say. It's very holy. What better day than Yom Kippur? So you, can you imagine Yom Kippur is where you know our you know we uh, we fast. So it says when we fast, it's really we're feeding our the uh, the, the soul is feeding the body. So it you know we are we are elevating our souls higher than our body so that's why um you know marriage is uh is uh you know when, when couples come together it's, it's in the spirit of holiness to remind them that as yom kippur is the holiest day of the year the atmosphere uh of the dancing the the, the 15 of uh needs to be refined needs to be exalted needs to be in, uh, in, uh, ennobled, meaning it's, it should be noble. The, the, the intent of the, the, the dancing girls and the intent of the young men are noble. They're not, they're not there to, to, to find, uh, you know, uh, uh, but they, they, they have the best of intent. So that's the simple explanation. If you want to go a little deeper, so Yom Kippur, it's a very, like I said, very soulful day. And it's, it is the day where uh, the body is not is nourished by the soul. Fasting literally means to nourish the soul. What better day for the soul to meet your soul, your soul mate during the day when the souls are elevated. So, so again, so uh, what what the, the sages are saying. So on the fifteenth of Av, as the uh, as as we contemplate on. This is the day I'm going to find my soulmate. It needs to be reminded that it's a very holy and, and uh, it, you know, the souls are elevated. The, the men are looking for the bride and the bride is looking for the bridegroom. So both are anticipating that the, the spiritual level of the soul is high. And of course, the third level of understanding, why is the 15 of Av connected to Yom Kippur? Remember, Yom Kippur is what? It's the day of what? It's the day of reconciliation. And then you ask the question, what is there to reconcile? The couples are not even married yet, right? Think about that. Why, why is Yom Kippur's reconciliation connected to the 15th of Ab, where they have not been married yet? So what are they making up for? What are they trying to reconcile for? The truth is, they need to make up. Why? Because be, uh, before, when, when they were created, remember, when God created the soul, the soul was both male and female. Say that, male and female. Male and female. And, and, and remember when, when, when Adam said, you know, I, I want you to make me like the animals, make me a female version. So what did God do? He took out the female, the womb of man, woman, the womb of man. He took up the womb of man and he separated them. He separated the female parts of Adam and made a woman. So, so in the beginning, if you think about it, if you think about it in a very spiritual level, the souls were one. At one time, they were one. And then when, when they came down to earth, the soul separated to different bodies. One became a male body and the other one became a female body. And therefore, in the 15th of Ah, what's happening is there, is there seems to be a reunion. There seems to be a reconciliation. There seems to be the coming together of the souls that were once one. Am I still here? Two souls that were once one in heaven were innocently, when, when they came down to the world, lost their, lost their touch. They finally find each other. Some landed in another country and then they, they somehow got together. Hey, Amen, I'm still here. Uh, so once the, once the soul were lost, then they are reconciled. 
and come together with God. So Yom Kippur is a perfect day for what? For the second, uh, the soulmates recon reconnecting in the most deeper soulful sacred way. That is Yom Kippur, of course. So that is telling me that Yom Kippur is not a sad day. It shouldn't be a sad day. It is, it's a serious day. The same way as marriage is a very serious thing. But they were dancing. Say that they were dancing. The, 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 the girls were dancing. And some of them, the, the women were singing or the men were singing. The men were, the, 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 the women were dancing and they were singing. It was serious, but it was joyful. That is what Yom Kippur should be. Why? Because Yom Kippur is, is, uh, is all about reconciling ourselves back to God. It's, it's all about reuniting ourselves back to God. It's, always, it's all about coming to God again. Amen? So it should be a joyful time. It should be a joyful time. Yes, we fast um, to, to elevate our souls above our bodies. We, we say to our bodies, keep quiet. I'm praying. I'm praying to my God. And, uh, and it should not be a, a time of sadness, but a time of joy. So what about the 15th day of Ab? So like I said, the night of Ab is the saddest day of the year. The day when everything fell down and broke apart. It's like the home that we built with God. All of a sudden it broke down, got destroyed. We have been banished into exile. There's a long list of tragic events that fell on the 9th of Av. And the common theme of all of that is what? Is separation. We've been separated from God. But there is a day. They call it the 15th of Av. The 15th of Av is considered the day of reconciliation. If the, the night of Av is the day of destruction of our home, we shared with God the 15th of Av is the beginning of our rebuilding of that home. Again, the similar theme on, on Yom Kippur is reconciliation, it's rebuilding, it's reunion. Amen. So, uh, to conclude on our teaching about the, the month of Av, Av is a very powerful month to hear God's voice. And where he's leading us. We should accept it by faith the same way as Yeshua or Joshua and Caleb did. And did not doubt God's ability. Well, let's, not, let's not second guess God. God, do you really want me to do this? God will give you the, the, the strength. God will give you the resources. God will give you the means. God just says, uh, we need, I need you to step up in faith. And God will do the rest. It is the month where the bridegroom is eyeing his bride. God is looking at us today. Are you making yourself ready today? Are you making yourself ready? Are you putting on the white garments of Yeshua? Are you wearing the white garments of Yeshua? Are you serving him with dancing, with joy in your heart? Or are you serving him with the heaviness and, and uh, mourning in your heart? So today, as we, as we, re, we are reminded of, of the beauty of the month of Av, the strength of the month of Av, let us use this as the month to be joyful, to prepare ourselves. It's not a month of sadness. Yes, there is sadness because the, the, the temple has been destroyed, but Yeshua will rebuild that. Yeshua will, will, will set up his third temple. And uh, he's looking for his bride today. This is the month where the, 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 the bridegroom is seeking his bride, is eyeing his bride. Are you ready? Uh, are you ready? Are you preparing yourselves? So with that, I'm going to end the recording. And we're going to, uh, to uh, do the prayers.